And hello again and welcome to the second of two videos about Qatar Airways business class that's not a Q-suite. Now in my first video I talked about the Boeing 777-300ER and Qatar Airways still has a lot of planes of that type that's flying around in the old seat configuration of two, two, two seats. And um, just to sum it up, if you haven't seen my first video yet, please have a look at it by the way, uh, I can only say I loved those old seats. They were so comfortable and I surely prefer them over many modern seats. Now today all is about the Airbus A350-900 of Qatar Airways and that has a modern seat configuration. Modern seats of one, two, one seat. That means every seat has a direct aisle access and you also find those seats on the Airbus A380, which will never get Q-suites by the way, and the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. But now let's start at Haneda Airport, which is built on an artificial island in Tokyo Bay, just as Doha International Airport in Qatar, that's also built on an artificial island. So see you in a moment in Tokyo, Haneda. <music> Good evening. Tonight's flight is gonna go to Doha from Tokyo Haneda, taking off just after midnight. It's gonna be uh, Airbus 350. This is a very loud announcement. It's gonna be an Airbus 350 of uh, Qatar Airways in the um, seat configuration of 121. So that means it's gonna be a really nice modern seat. It's got many awards I think and um, it's gonna be a one and a half hours, no, eleven and a half hours flight. Leaving just after midnight, arriving just after five. With all the time difference it's gonna be eleven and a half hours. I'm looking forward to that very much. Also to see how the seats are in comparison with the 777. Old seats but they were quite comfortable and there was a really good um, experience. So let's see about that. Now I'm gonna go to the Japan Airlines Lounge, which is the lounge for Qatar Airways, as they're both uh, One World members. Check-in at Haneda Airport went pretty fast and smooth, so I had some time to have a look around the airport too. And they also have some really nice dining options, by the way. But I went to the Business Class Lounge and Japan Airlines offers access to their Business Class passengers and Business Class passengers of One World Airlines to their Sakura Lounge. They have a nice selection of beverages, including wines and beers, a nice selection of dishes, international and Japanese dishes, and they also put the calories for every single dish, so you better don't look at that if you want to enjoy. <laughs> they have a little section for first class passengers as well, and they have a very special opening time, so look at that, they're open until 25 hours 30, and that's a real Japanese specialty. So here I am in the business class lounge of Japan Airlines in Haneda Airport. That's the Sakura lounge. It's a nice lounge. It's not like amazing. It's not comparable to Emirates or Qatar lounges. But it's nice to spend an hour here. Well, I just realized there's another lounge of Japan Airlines. Um, I arrived early today to the airport. So I have some extra time and um, the other lounge is closer to my gate so I'm just gonna have a look over there and check it out. The other lounge is called Sakura Sky View Lounge and there's a reason for it because it's got a really nice view over the airfield at least at daytime and by the way it's really nice and spacious. Now that would be a wonderful view during the day. It goes out to the runways and to the airfield well, anyway, but there's another wonderful seating areas and really, really, really nice chairs. Oh my god, that's wonderful. So I wanted to take a shower and the lady here who is responsible at the shower reception doesn't speak English or it's just very few words she speaks or understands in English um, 
that's quite much the case in the whole country, but in the airport, at the international airport of an international airline, that's really rare. So I had somebody else ask and find out when I can take a shower and if, and it looks like it's not possible anymore. Although they said before it's always possible <laughs> anyway. I might just go into the plane a little stinky, so let's see about that. But that's really rare uh, in other airlines that nobody speaks English. That's really... Hmm. Well, more or less at the last moment I finally got to have a shower and I really enjoyed that. You see the shower room is really very nice. So I really enjoyed my shower and when I left to go to the gate I found out that I could have stayed so much longer. Because there at the departure board it said to be advised. Now that's not a good sign. But that's the moment when the lounge access really pays off because you can spend the time waiting at the lounge relaxing and not running around in the airport that you don't know. And then I simply had to take a picture of the boarding lounge for our heavily delayed flight because it's such a lesson to be learned from the people in Japan how they can just sit and wait without getting too loud and too emotional. It's so impressive. But finally we got to board our beautiful Airbus A350-900. It's such a beautiful plane, I just love to look at this beautiful, elegant design. And once you board, you get greeted by really highly professional staff that really know how to welcome you in a very authentic, warm way. And that's really special about Qatar Airways. You. Now you see the whole plane is very beautiful inside. It's a very modern seat configuration. It's the new seat configuration that's not Q-suite. As just like on the Airbus A380 that will never get a Q-Suites by the way and also like on the Boeing Dreamliner, the Boeing 787. You see it's a really elegant and stylish design. Now I will show you something that's not so great for me in my opinion and that's what I call a foot coffin. I really like to have more space for my feet. Anyway. You see for the rest it's really nice design with very nice colors and many nice little details here. The easy reading lamp, there's a bottle holder and you see the whole ensemble looks just really good. Um, the seat is not so amazing, I must say it's I mean, not like everybody says it's like the most amazing thing. I think the old seat is quite, quite nice already, the 777. So called, so called old seats, they were really comfy and kind of private even, even though they are 2 2 2 configuration. But we'll see, I haven't slept yet here, so it's the first time in this, in this aircraft and I was looking forward to this really a lot. One uh, hour and a half delay, but now 11 hours and a half to go to Doha. It's gonna be a great flight, and I'm hoping that I'm gonna sleep really well and have nice food and nice drinks. So let's hope for that. While taxiing to the runway, let's have a look at the seat again. Now, this is the seat control that brings the seat to a 180 degrees lie flat position, and it also offers lumbar support. It doesn't have the massage function though that the old seats used to have. Then there's a really nice and bright screen, very colorful, and a number of power outlets and all kinds of other outlets for all kinds of electrical devices. Then there's a table that folds out in a very smart way. It's very well designed and gives a lot of uh, surface for all your laptops and other devices. One clear highlight of the Airbus A350 in general are the high-definition cameras that are installed in the tail of the plane and in the belly of the plane to see the front wheel so you can see your own plane moving. And this is the entrance to runway 34R and now one funny fact is we took off from runway 34R in Tokyo and we landed on runway 34R in Doha, Qatar. Now that's really funny. Well, if you've already seen some of my other videos, you've already realized how much I love to take pictures of the world from the plane, also at night. But here I got really not so lucky. The clouds set in right away and I got only reflections and that was really sad. 
elevated into the air. Well, Qatar provides pajamas for business class travelers, and um, I got a large one, so that's more realistic than the medium one. I'm gonna take that on, and I'm looking forward to a really nice flight now, and hopefully some really good sleep. Well, the pajama was a little big, but it was so comfortable and I continued a little more with champagne and warm nuts until dinner started. And they start very fast after the takeoff and Qatar has a dine-on-demand concept. That means you can eat anything from the menu in any order at any time and in any amount you like. And Qatar has really a lot of very nice dishes on offer and also some really good wines. And here I'm going to give you some examples of dishes that I had on this very flight. And yes, I ate them all. <laughs> but hey, it was an 11 and a half hours flight and I couldn't sleep. So what should I do? You have to eat. Um, to be honest, they were mostly light options, but they were all fantastic. They were so delicious. And I can only tell you, in case you go on a Qatar Airways business class flight, don't eat at the lounge. Don't eat too much there because you're going to have a great dining experience on the plane. Now let's have a look at Qatar's Oryx One entertainment system. By the way, the Oryx is Arabia's highly endangered desert antelope, a very beautiful animal, and it's part of the logo of Qatar Airways. The entertainment system might be not as incredibly huge as, for example, Emirates, but it still offers a lot of options even for the longest flight. So there's a big number of all kinds of movies of all genres and all origins. From Hollywood to Bollywood, there's the whole Star Wars collection, there's Hollywood classics, but also the current blockbusters. You have all kinds of TV series and comics and kids TV. You can play games and you have a large audio library. And you have a really very beautiful and responsive 3D flight show where you see where your flight is right now. As you can see, we are reaching our destination very soon and they put on the mood lighting again towards more daylight. And there were still people sleeping on their flat beds. They were sleeping throughout the flight and I found it so admirable and I so envied them at the same time because I just could not sleep. But when I opened my window above Iran, I was awarded by this country's sheer beauty. When you fly over Iran's north, you see those amazing snowy peaks. And here in the south, vast desert and beautiful mountain range. So, almost 10 hours are over. One and a half hours to go. It was a um, yeah, good night's flight, uh, however. They didn't put out the mattresses today because there was like turbulences and then they didn't put them anymore. So without the mattress um, it's not so nice to sleep on that kind of seat. Uh, you feel hot quite, quite a lot, I would say. And um, I also must say I really prefer the old 777 seats. Looks really, look really fancy and they look really, really fancy, yes. And uh, of course, they're still among the best in the, in the whole business, but they're not really comfortable. Not amazingly comfortable. When we reached Qatar, the vision was a little reduced because there was a lot of sand in the air on top of the already very high humidity. So we didn't see so well everything, but anyway, there's the airport and I put another um, camera so you can always look out of the window and also see our plane from the outside camera at the same time. But now let's just enjoy our final approach onto runway 34R of Doha International Airport. And that's exactly the same runway number as we had in Tokyo Haneda. And in a moment, I'll explain to you what those numbers are all about.
Now, for all of you who've always wondered what the numbers on the runway actually mean, 3434 means 340 degrees on a compass. That means this runway goes towards 340 degrees on a compass that's north northwest. Of course, a runway has two sides. If you start from the other side, it would be 160. That's the opposite number on a compass. That would be towards south southeast. If there's a letter on the runway, that means there's more than one runway going to the same direction. So in that case, if you have two runways that go parallel to each other, the right one would be, in this case, 34R, and the other one would be 34L for left. If there's three runways that go in the same direction, that happens sometimes in some airports, then you have an additional uh, letter, and that would be C for center. In this case, it would be 34 center, but there's not three runways in Doha. So I hope I cleared it up a little. So this was the flight from Tokyo Haneda to Doha and Qatar Airways new Airbus 350. As I said, the seats are not so amazing, but it was still a nice experience. So, and before I forget to say that, I just uh, checked out the first row and that's really very nice seating because there's a lot of uh, leg room, much more than in all the other rooms, uh, in, no, sorry, in all the other seats of the Airbus 350 in business class. So if you get the first row, that's great. And actually that's always available because it's um, marked as an emergency seat. And I mean, on this flight, the whole business class was sold out, but the first row was empty. So you could have asked for that. I just didn't really realize I was a little too sleepy. <laughs> and uh, also there's Ramadan right now. So Ramadan means no eating and no drinking in public areas. They also announced it in the flight. So uh, whenever you go on Ramadan on Qatar Airways, just remind yourself of there's some restrictions. Also, there's no alcohol in the um, lounge. No matter if you go in the first or uh, business class lounges, there's no alcohol. So. Now look at that, that's a nice arrivals lounge. So they have an arrivals lounge, so the flight is not totally over yet. And the great thing about it's not about this is not only that this is a really nice lounge, but I'm the only customer. Now that's crazy. I can do a little dance here. Well, after the next sleep maybe. So that's a nice thing. Well, everything for my report and my viewers. So I did go and check out the showers, the shower rooms in the arrivals lounge and it's again so impressive. That's the arrival lounges, shower rooms. Huge, huge bathrooms. Well, it's just really very impressive, like always here. And that's only for one person, they have five or more showers. And not to forget that Qatar Airways has a really interesting stopover program for most time of the year for all flights that have a connection time of more than 12 hours in Doha. Doha is a really interesting place to visit where really old traditions meet modernity and the hotels are great four and five star hotels either for free or at an incredibly reduced rate, so that's a high recommendation. Now these were my two videos about what Qatar Airways business class is like if you're not in a Q-suite. And it can be really great, especially if you're on the old seat of a Boeing 777. That's my personal opinion. I'm finishing off here with some pictures of daytime Doha, a really great place to visit. And please give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel, I'd be so happy about that. Give me all your comments, I love to read them all and to improve. And then hopefully see you again very soon on my channel, Travel, Sing, Fly.